My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Um, today we will continue with on, on the topic about enemies and we want to make um, a more interesting, slightly more advanced example um, with an enemy that will shoot some projectiles. So let's say we want this guy to, to shoot a flame every three seconds, for example. Um, so for now, it just works randomly. Oh, sorry, I forgot to remove one line when preparing the tutorial. For now, it's a very basic enemy that just works randomly among the four main directions and then nothing else. So we just keep that behavior, but we want uh, to shoot a flame every three seconds. So how to create a flame or a projectile or uh, shoot by an enemy? Actually, the easiest way is probably that the flame is its own model of enemy. So we have it here uh, in our initial quest. So we could create a flame in, in the quest editor here but that's not really what we want, right? We don't want the flame to be created right when the map starts. We want to create it dynamically from the enemy. Um, so luckily, it's possible from a script to create an enemy or any kind of entity actually dynamically. So how do we do that? Um, we do that with the function map create and, and we have some creation functions for all type of entities but the one we are interested in here is map create enemy and the only parameters parameter of this create enemy function is a table that contains all properties so it's uh, we will just provide the same information as we want, as we would do uh, here. So the name, the direction, position, breed, everything. But we do it from from a script, from some Lua code, instead of from this uh, dialog box. And we want to do this in, in a timer. We want to repeat the flame creation every three seconds. So. If you remember the tutorial about timers, we call sol.timer.start. We pass the first parameter. Uh, this is the context of your timer. And the context should be our uh, enemy here. So the guy who, who will create the flame. That means that if the enemy is hurt or killed, then the flame will also be removed. Um, uh, uh, sorry, then the timer will be reset, and that's really what we want, right? We really do not want the flame creation timer to to trigger while the enemy is in 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 the hurt state. Um, and also we. Would, we do, we do not want the flame to be created after the enemy is, is even dead. So that's why we want the, the context to be the enemy here. You can try with you can try put, putting the map here, but uh, you will you will be surprised. Um, okay, the delay should be three seconds, so three thousand milliseconds, and the code of the that we want to be called every three seconds is like we saw create enemy on the map object map create enemy so our map is declared here and only one parameter which is a table so it's a list of key and value pairs um, if you if you know some other languages it's similar to um, an associative array or to a dict in, in Python, for example. Uh, a lot of these properties are optional. The mandatory ones are layer, x, y, direction, and breed. 
So the layer should be the same as uh, our main enemy layer, uh, which means we want um, actually we will call enemy get position to get uh, x, y, and layer of our global enemy. Global global here is the name of, of the enemy. And I'm not saying globa, global. <laughs> it's complicated to explain with my uh, crappy pronunciation, but hopefully it's, you, you can understand. Enemy get position returns three parameters. It's uh, x, y, and layer. And I'm calling this on my my main my main enemy, so this guy. Which means I can create the flame at the same coordinates in the same layer as my um, sorry my global. Oh, I, I I even made a typo here, global and not global. Anyway. <laughs> What else is mandatory? Direction and breed. So direction is kind of useless in case of a flame. It's also useless for most enemies. It's just the initial direction here that I would put uh, in the quest editor if the enemy was created from the quest editor. But since it's most enemies start a movement uh, in some random direction uh, right away, the initial direction most of the time has no effect. But it's still mandatory, so let's put 0. It's a direction between zero, 0 and 3. 0 being uh, right. And I think that's it. Oh, of course, breed, that's important. Which model of enemy do you want? So this is the, the place where we say that we want to create an enemy from this script flame. Um, OK. We can start testing this. Let's wait three seconds and a flame should be created. Yay, it works. So for now, our flame has no movement. And only one was created. If you want your timer to repeat itself, you need to return true in your timer callback function. So return true, this will repeat the process. So that's our flame enemy. And of course, we want to give a movement, a movement to our flame. So let's create a movement here. Flame movement to be clearer. You could call this uh, just movement, but we already have a variable here. So it's, it would be a bit weird to create a, a different variable uh, that has the same name. It will just hide it. It's legal, but uh, probably not very not very clean. So we create a, mo a movement of type uh, straight. Then you want to set the angle and the speed. So the angle should be uh, whatever angle is uh, between this guy and the hero. And luckily, there exists a function in the entity API to get the angle in radiance uh, towards any other entity or towards any point. Uh, it's entity get angle. So this one here. Uh, it's not. It's flame movement movement set angle. And let's let's get the angle from the enemy to the hero and the hero variable is declared here and some speed so the speed in pixel per second of our our global enemy is um, 32 so let's make something like three times faster 96 and let's start our movement on the flame. 
on the flame enemy. Uh, so I, I need to store the result of, of this in the, in some variable. So it will be a variable of type enemy, which means we can start a movement on it. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, the script of the flame itself is... I forgot to show you, but it's very, very simple. It's just a standard enemy that has a sprite, some life and damage, but uh, it's actually invincible. Um, and it disappears after two seconds. And that's it. So we create one, and then we 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 uh, we create it, and and then we add the movement here. Um, there is actually an, an easier way to create an enemy in the specific case that you are already in an enemy script. I mean, make a, create an enemy from another another enemy. It's so common that we added in the enemy API. Uh, where is it? By the way, it could even be in the Entity API, but for now it's in the Enemy API. So you can create an enemy from another enemy. It's exactly the same as Map Create Enemy, so the one that we used, except that the coordinates that you provide, X and Y, are relative to the current enemy. So you could do you could get rid of this line and just do enemy create enemy. And actually the layer is optional by default it would be the same layer. And you could say zero and zero to start from exactly the same coordinates. Direction is also optional so we can remove it. And you can specify some coordinates if you want to start your flame with some offset, some initial offset from the creator enemy, but here it seems good enough. And actually, even these ones are also, are also optional, and by default, they are zero, which means that, that just this is enough. So we simplified the code a lot. Okay, so something a bit weird is that, is that when the flame hits a wall, it slides across the wall and then it continues like like a, like a, a normal walking enemy or NPC would do. So this is a smoothness parameter of the movement. We probably want to disable that for flame. So set smooth, false, and it will not adjust its coordinates whenever it hits a wall. It will just stop. I mean, it tries to continue in the same direction. It does not really stop. But if you want to, to make it stop, you, you have two solutions here. You could do just set ignore obstacles true. And then you can traverse walls. Oops, I forgot the S. If your projectile is some some light or, or I don't know some some wind or something that is above everything, some magical spell. Maybe it can, you can decide that it just traverses walls. So in, in that case, you do that. Or you set set smooth force, and then probably it's better to just stop it completely when a wall is reached, uh, or, or to, to remove it. So there is an event on all movements that is called on obstacle reached. And here, let's remove, let's uh, stop the, let's, let's just kill the flame. 
Flame Remove. Now it will disappear immediately when the wall is reached. Or yet another solution is to stop the movement. Okay, I failed to hit a wall. Okay, here the movement was was stopped. So you can customize your the behavior of your projectile. There is really a lot of solutions. Um Maybe we want to make the code a little bit cleaner and I would like all of this to be in another function because it's here we are in on restarted of our enemy. So the, the main enemy. But all of this code is about the, the flame. So why don't we create a function that we call for example shoot flame? So a local function which means a local variable in this script that contains a value of type function. And I will move all of these lines here. Like that, return true still. And our timer will, we want to, we want to pass the name of this function here. So it's completely equivalent to what we had except that there is a better separation now between the behavior of the flame and the behavior of the, the main enemy. Okay, cool. Um, something else we could do is make the delay a bit more random. Let's say the first time it starts after three seconds, but then it's random. So what you could do is uh, return, instead of return true, it's also allowed to return uh, a number, and that number will, will be then used at the new delay of your timer. Um, and so let's return some other delay, and it will be computed as a random value between one and five seconds. So between one and five, and multiplied by uh, 1000 or just something completely random between 1000 and, and 5000 and I think this deserves a small comment between 1 and 5 seconds So the first flame should be still be after three seconds and then yeah the second one was very quick and the third one is took a lot more time okay that works something to notice again is that if I shoot the enemy if I hit the enemy its timers are reset so the next flame would be again after three seconds it's what I was explaining before. On restarted, um, I mean, after when the enemy is in hurt state, its its movement is replaced by the the hurt mov movement, and its timers are uh, cancelled. That's why I recreate the time the timer here in on restarted. Um, if you if you did this on in on created it, instead, then both the movement and the timer would be created only once and and never restart after being hurt. So it will still shoot a flame. Oh, no, it, it does not. Okay. But then after being hurt, nothing else, nothing else happens because uncreated is not called again. It's unrestarted that is called again. Yeah, creating a timer in the first function does not even work the first time because it's immediately uh, cancelled like like after the, the enemy is hurt. Whenever the enemy is restarted, um, just before it's restarted, 
well, the, the timers are, are cancelled and the enemy is considered to also be restarted uh, initially after being created. Sorry if it was a bit confusing, but you, you can make your own ex exper experiments and, and you will see. Something else that I wanted to mention is that, as I told you at the beginning, if you put a wrong context here, for example the map, then the timer will persist after the the enemy dies. It could also happen that the the, the flame is is shot um, when the and while the enemy is being hurt. Here it's even worse. I have two parallel timers because I. I recreated my timer in on restarted, but still with the map context. So whenever the enemy stops being hurt, uh, we create another timer, but the previous one still exists because its con its context was was the map and not the and not the enemy. Okay, now it's dead, and it it, it still shoots some flames. So timers are tricky. When you are in an, in an enemy script, the usual good practice is to always have the enemy itself as a parent, as a context to your timer, so that when the enemy dies, whatever timers it had also dies. And additionally, when it's the enemy is hurt, the timer also is cancelled and you have the opportunity to recreate it in on restarted. Okay, um, I hope it, it was not too confusing, but it's really important. It's, mm, it's it's very common to to have some timers issue uh, with with your enemies. But um, if you do like this in on restarted and with the enemy context, you should be fine. Um, I guess that's it for this tutorial. Now you, you know how to create an enemy that shoots uh, some projectiles. So obviously, or not obviously, if you could create multiple instances of your creator enemy, they will all uh, have their independent movements, independent timers, and random delays. So it's, it just works as, as you want as you want. Because remember that when you have multiple instances, um, the whole script is called again on on every each uh, of your three enemies here. Okay. Um, again, enemies are probably one one of the most always one of the most complicated scripts and and one of the most interesting to to make so um, i hope this will help we will do some more examples of enemies in the next tutorials thank you all for watching please join our discord if you have any question or if you want to to share your your cool creations thank you again and see you next time that's all for now <laughs>